for Allah. We praise Him, we ask for His help, we beg for His forgiveness. And we seek refuge and protection with Allah from the evils of ourselves and from the evil consequences of our sins. <coughs> Whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides to the straight path, no force in the universe can misguide him. And whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala misguides, no one can guide them to the truth. I bear witness that there is no deity, no object worthy of any act of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one without any partners, associates or equals. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a servant and his messenger. In Surah Al-Ali Imran, chapter 3, verse 102, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, Ya ayuha al-lazina amanu taqullaha haqqa tuqatihi wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. O you who believe, be mindful of God as you do, and make sure you devote yourselves to him, to your dying moment. And in Surah Al-Ahzab, chapter 33, verses 70 and 71, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again reminds us, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, Ya ayyuhal lazeen amanu taqullaha wa qudu qabla salida, yuslih lakum a'malukum wa yaghfir lakum dhunubakum, wa ma yuti allaha wa rasooluhu faqad faza fawza nazima. Believers, be mindful of God, speak in a direct fashion and to good purpose, and He will put your deeds right for you and forgive you your sins. Whoever obeys God and His Messenger will truly achieve a great triumph. In Surah Al Ibrahim, chapter 14, verses 40 and 41, from the mouth of the prayer of Prophet Ibrahim, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, Rabbi Jaani Mukim as Salata wa Min Zuriyati, Rabbana wa Taqabbal Dua, Rabbana Firli wa Liwadi the Yawal and Mukhinina, Yawma Yabun Nisar. Lord, grant that I and my offspring may keep up the prayer. Our Lord, accept my request. Our Lord, forgive me, my parents and the believers on the day of reckoning. And in Surah Al-Teen, chapter 35, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, وَالتِّينُ وَالزَّيْتُونِ وَالتُورُ الصِّينِينَ وَهَازَ الْبَلَدِ الْأَمِينَ لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمِ ثُمَّ رَدَدْنَاهُ أَسْفَلَ سَافِلِينَ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا السَّالِحَاتِ فَلَهُمْ أَجْرٌ غَيْرٌ مَنْنُونٌ فَمَا يُكَذِّبُكَ بَعْضُ بِالدِّينِ أَلَيْسَ اللَّهُ بِأَحْكَمِ الْحَاكِمِينَ By the fig, by the olive, by Mount Sinai, by the safe town, the city of Mecca, we create man in the finest state, then reduce him to the lowest of the law, except those who believe and do good deeds they will have an unfailing reward. After this, what makes you, O man, deny the judgment? Is God not the most decisive of judges? Dear brothers and sisters, Alhamdulillah, we are gathered on this day of Juman to worship our Creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to recognize our place and to bow down on this hierarchy that we are the created and we are on this earth on this test, this dunya, to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And alhamdulillah, we are about to enter the month of Ramadan, that blessed time of the year, the Shahru Ramadan that is coming, that guest, that beautiful guest that is upon us. And we are looking forward to that. And we are praying that we will see it and that we will complete it in the best way possible. The month of Ramadan is the ninth month in the Islamic calendar. It is the ninth month and it's a time of renewal. It's a time of being reborn, to recharge, right? Nine months is a time and the baby comes from the, the mother's womb. And through that nine months, the baby grows from a seed to, to being a human being slowly growing, gaining the spirit, and then growing in, in its ozoves, in its arms, legs, brain, the organs, and everything. This nine months throughout the year, we human beings, the grown-ups, we usually gather a lot of burden and put a lot of baggage behind us. And this ninth month, the month of Ramadan, that is upon us as an opportunity to, to become 
those individuals that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says has created in the finest mold. In Surah al teen the Ahsan et right? The finest of the creation. Right? This finest state. And inshallah, this time, this month of Ramadan, right? Is a time for us to do three things, three important things. One of these is to do introspection, to look back at the year and to, to negotiate where we have been, what we have been doing and where we are. And second, it's a month of incre to increase in our relationship with the Quran. And third, it's a, relation it's a time for us to increase in our Salah. And all of these with this idea that through this month, we can truly benefit from the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That this month is a time to rejuvenate, to, to replenish, to renew ourselves. And there are many opportunities that, that bring this to us. Let's start with the first one, the idea of this introspection. But in Surah al taqwir in chapter 81, right? Verse 26. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks a question. فَأَيْنَ تَسْحَبُونَ So where are you going? In Latin, co Right? Sometimes we ask, co America. Where is America going? فَأَيْنَ تَسْحَبُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks, and where are you going? And then says, this is a message for all people. For those who wish to take the straight path, but you will only wish to do so by the will of God, the Lord of all people. So it's a question and introspection moment. But we need to recognize that we need to give an honest answer to that question. Right? And it is one that is the path, the straight path, and it will be possible for us if Allah wills. So asking ourselves this question, so where are we going and what do I want to get out of this blessed month of Ramadan when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells that the shayateen are chained and the, the month of Quran is upon us is an important moment in our lives. We should find ourselves in that place where we need to be humble enough to ask that question. Because throughout the year, as we've said, we gather a lot of baggage. And sometimes that pride comes in between us and making best use of the month of Ramadan. Because we hesitate to ask that introspective question, we don't really realize that it's a time where we can put ourselves on a correct path. Or where we can make up for some of our mistakes. Sometimes shaitan, knowing that it will be changed soon, tricks our minds, saying, leading us to doubt the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Saying there is no hope in you. Throughout the year you have been in this state, so what good will it be if in the month of Ramadan you fast and you pray and all? So we shouldn't fall prey to that trick. Because as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah the team, right, and we'll reflect a little bit more on this. He has created us in the <coughs> finest of molds. And then says, and then we have reduced it to the lowest of the law. Ahsani taqweem and asfala safari. Wateen wa zaytoon wa turu sinin wa hazal balad al ameen. Lagad khalaqna al insana fi ahsani taqweem. We have created you in the finest of molds. And that is the ideal we want to be. Summa radadnahu asfala safirin. Right? And then reduced him to the lowest of the law. Some of us said, you know, this relates to your age and, and you're, you're getting weak. Some said that it is your spiritual state. You can be the one that is close to the Dahsani Taqim, the finest of the creation, the finest state, the one 
the human that is close to that, that knows and recognizes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and knows his her limit before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or the one that is lowest of the law, the same individual can go right? to a point of denial, to a point of not recognizing the hierarchy between the created and the creator, not knowing our place. Not knowing our place in relationship to our relationship with one another, our relationship with our environment, our relationship with our community. And then you become the lowest of the law. And it's important to recognize that we shouldn't fall into pride by thinking that we are free from going from this finest state to the lowest of the law because if we don't recognize Allah's Sharia, then we are going to be in that position. But that for those who might be there, then there is potential for them to go back to their original state where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us in the finest of the forms. And this point is important because, dear brothers and sisters, as our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in a hadith, the Prophet says, fear of Allah is the beginning of all wisdom and being wary of things which may lead to sin wara, is the master of all deeds the beginning of all wisdom is the fear of Allah to have taqwa of Allah to be God conscious to strike that balance and the master of all deeds is to be wary of things which may lead to sin and this might be different for each one of us. Right? And it is a time when during the month of Ramadan, maybe it will be a little bit more painful when you do something wrong, because you'll realize it comes from your nafs and not from an outer source. But that it also gives you that opportunity to identify that. And inshallah, in the second part briefly, we'll touch on that and we'll continue to reflect on what we can do for the month of Ramadan to make more best use of it, inshallah. Dear brothers and sisters, we've started to reflect on three things that we can do during this month of Ramadan. We have said that if this beautiful month, this blessed month is before us, it's a time for us to renew ourselves. It's a time for us to replenish our Iman. It's a time for us to make sure that we make best use of it, these 30 days, this limited time, so that you know throughout the year, rest of the year, we can rely on the fuel that we have taken from it, and that we can make a commitment to stay on that path. The second thing that we have emphasized is to increase in our relationship with the Quran, and then the third is to increase in our salah, and we will inshallah focus on this. And we have said that, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in chapter 95, surah 13, right, Allah has created us in the best of forms the finest of the malls, right? The finest state. But says, then we have reduced them to the lowest of the law. But there is a conditionality there, right? The continuation is that, إِلَّا لَزِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا السَّالِهَاتِ فَلَهُمْ أَجْرٌ غَيْرِهُمْ Except those who believe and do good deeds, they will have an unfailing reward, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues to say. Many of us sometimes you know, end up confusing Surah al teen and Surah Al-Asr because there is the same form that continues, right? And not only in form, but also in meaning they are similar, right? Allah says in Surah Al-Asr, وَالْأَصْرِ فَا إِنْسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرًا إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا السَّالِهَاتِ وَتَوَاسَوْ بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاسَوْ بِالصَّالِ Again, there is a, an exception that is made. Except for those in Surah al teen Allah says, who believe and do good deeds they will have an unfailing reward. And in Surah Al-Asr we say, 
by time mankind is in a loss except for those who encourage one another towards patience and towards doing good deeds and towards being mindful of Allah right so in both cases we have we have that safety cushion so to speak to fall back on and to say that we can be among those at the end of and throughout this month of Ramadan that truly believe and do good deeds. The one that is patient and encourages one another towards patience, right? Towards doing good deeds and towards encouraging one another to, uh, to be patient. If we can do that, right? then we are going to be in that finest of the states. Otherwise, Allah says that, you know, humankind, we often tend to be mindful of Allah when, uh, you know, things are okay, and then forget about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala quickly. Right? In Surah Al-Ma'arij, for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in chapter 70, Man was truly created anxious, when evil touches him impatient, but tight-fisted when good fortune comes his way. Not so except those who pray and are constant in their prayers, who give a due share of their wealth. So the month of Ramadan, right, is a month of Quran and prayer, of Salah. We are going to increase in both. We are going to increase in our relationship with the Holy Quran that was revealed in the month of Ramadan. And we'll try to do the true increasing in Salah as well and in reading the Quran, reflecting on its meaning. And throughout that process, inshallah, it is our hope that we are going to be mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that we are going to get close to that point where we can do an honest introspection. An honest muhasaba where we'll ask, okay, can I correct one thing that I know is not right in, in what I do throughout the year? It might be something very small and I encourage all of us to at least identify one or two things that however minor they might be, to correct those throughout month of Ramadan, to remain away from them. For some of us, it might be being in certain environments where there is gossip and backbiting. Maybe we make sure that we are not there. For some others, it might be things that we see on an app in our phone, and maybe we just leave that app and try not to go back to it after the month of Ramadan. For some of us, it might be not being very focused in our prayer. And maybe the month of Ramadan becomes that point where we identify this one concrete thing where we fix, which is to try to increase in focus in our prayer. This concrete path will allow us and will make us all the more cognizant of the fact that the month of Ramadan is one that is blessed and that one that is full of blessings and that we can inshallah make use of it without falling prey to that doubt in our minds saying it's you know, just you know an automated you know month we'll continue pray this that you know come together but not have a very specific plan so if this month is one where we know that some of the the problems that our nefs creates will be more visible Perhaps that gives us that, that potential to fix it and to go back to that point where we'll be closer to the Ahzan al taqweem the true meaning of it. And as we have said, if we remember the verses we have read from Surah Al-Ibrahim in the beginning, where Prophet Ibrahim is making the dua, رَبِّ جَعَلْنِي مُقِيمَ السَّلَاةَ وَمِنْ ذُرِّيَّتِي رَبَّنَا وَتَقَبَّلْ دُعَى رَبَّنَا وَفِرْ لِي وَلِي بَعَدَدَيَّ وَلِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ يَوْمَ يَقُومُ الْحِسَابِ Lord, grant that I and my offspring may keep up the prayer. Our Lord, accept my request. Prophet Ibrahim is talking both about himself and also his offspring, which tells us that we need to be able to 
live Ramadan as a family in your individual lives as, as the families. And then in the second part, Rabbana Firli Again, Prophet Ibrahim is asking for forgiveness for himself, for his parents, and the believers on the day of judgment, on the day of reckoning. And this month it should be a month where we come together as a community and we pray that we are able to do these three things throughout this month. One is true introspection and not falling prey to the tricks of shaitan, thinking that we are not worthy of setting a, on a straight path during this month. That trick that will make us doubt the, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To the contrary, we should make a very concrete plan to change course in one or two specific aspects of our lives throughout this month of Ramadan. Whatever it might be. Second is the focus on the Quran throughout this month, the month of the Quran. To start reading and reflecting today so that throughout the month we can continue on this relationship. And third, the idea of Salah and the prayer and increased focus and an increased attention to Salah uh, throughout this month. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us to reach the month of Ramadan and that we make best use of it. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps us on firm ground. He is the changer, the turner of hearts, and we pray that He keeps our hearts steady on His religion, that He purifies our intentions, that He allows us to humble ourselves in service of His deen, of His religion. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives release to all those who are suffering under occupation, violence, and, uh, and difficulties, calamities. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unites us with our loved ones, both in this world and in the hereafter, and that we are neighbors to our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the hereafter, we pray. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala overlooks our shortcomings and our sins. We pray for all the oppressed and suppressed and poor here and all over the world. And we pray that the communities like this one that seek to serve the Muslim community are facilitated in their work and then it's made easy on them. اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار في رحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين In chapter 16 verse 19 سورة النحل الله سبحانه وتعالى إيمان ساس بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبعد يعيذكم لعلكم تذكرون God commands justice, doing good and generosity towards relatives. He forbids what is shameful, blameworthy and oppressive. He teaches you so that you may take heed.